Hey guys, thanks for tuning in to another video on ForgottenWeapons.com. I'm Ian McCollum, and I'm here today at the Croatian Police Museum in Zagreb, Croatia, taking a look at a number of their really cool rare firearms from the Croatian Homeland War. And today, in particular, we are taking a look at a Vila Velebita. This is a very limited production, relatively crude submachine gun from 1991, the height of the Croatian Homeland War. So the, the basic backstory here is in the lead up to the, the breakup of Yugoslavia, the Yugoslav government, Yugoslav People's Army, disarmed all of the local military forces in Croatia. That was primarily the Territorial Guard, their equivalent of a National Guard. And so when Serbia invaded Croatia in 1991, there was basically no significant military force uh, in place to fight back. And they had a, a fairly lightly armed police force, and that was it. And so there was a chaotic and urgent need to manufacture small arms in Croatia in response. And so in 1991, we see a plethora of submachine gun designs coming out of Croatia because a simple open bolt submachine gun is the easiest type of firearm to manufacture. Now, some of these were made by properly set up factories with pretty close to like legitimate uh, production lines. Some of them were the equivalent of me and my buddy made this in the garage. Well, the Vila Velabita falls into the we made this in a garage category. It takes elements from some of the other submachine guns that were around, in particular the Yugoslav M56. Uh, production of these was extremely small. We don't have any specific numbers. There aren't any records that were kept, but probably 100, almost certainly less than 200 of these were made. Maybe even less than 100 of them made. Um, but it's a pretty interesting gun, so let's go ahead and take a closer look at it. This probably looks like a fairly awkward gun, uh, and I can tell you from handling it that it is, in fact, a fairly awkward gun. We have a rather odd uh, folding stock here, you know, heavy-duty wire, but most of the time when you see a wire stock like this, it's a single uh, plane. This has two struts on it. Um, we have a folding mechanism, much like a Yugo M56, but not directly taken from it. Um, this component looks like a Yugo M56, but it actually isn't quite. They're similar, but similar in design, but not identical. The only markings we have on this guy are its serial number, which is 001. You can see it here on the rear frame and up here on the receiver tube. It's also on the cocking handle of all places. This is chambered for 9mm Parabellum, and its magazine is a modified Uzi magazine, so you can see some elements of that over on this side. Uh, it has its own different, slightly different, magazine release. Unfortunately, this magazine is thoroughly jammed in this gun, and uh, I can't get it out short of using a big hammer, and I don't really want to use a big hammer on serial number one of a very rare gun, even if it is a fairly crude very rare gun. We have a very long receiver tube on here, which is reminiscent of the Yugo um, M56. The charging handle is taken straight off an M56. This is probably a very comfortable gun to shoot, because as you can see, the sear position is back here. There is quite a lot of travel of this bolt uh, between the firing position and the full stroke of the receiver. So this bolt, especially in 9 Parabellum, probably never impacts the back of the receiver. Um, which minimizes muzzle climb, probably makes it a pretty comfortable gun to run. Now I can extend the stock by pushing in this button, in theory at least. There we go. And then that folds out and locks into place there. It's a little wobbly, but that's how it works. The grip assembly here also looks like a Yugo M56, but doesn't quite match identically. And if we look at it up close, you can see that this is hand fabricated. The, the side panels in particular, um, these are just panels, it's not a solid Bakelite unit. And these panels are clearly handmade. If you look at these uh, slots for grip, clearly handmade. Now, to disassemble this, we have a Yugo M56 style system, which was kind of taken from the MP40. We're going to pull this down, rotate it to lock it out, and then I can pull the trigger and rotate these two components away from each other, and then 
I can pull the lower assembly off of the tube. Now the M56 had a just a regular large diameter coil spring. This has a telescoping self-contained recoil spring and what's interesting is this spring and in fact this bolt which I can take out here. The spring and the bolt are virtually identical to the M91 Krogar, another domestic production Croatian submachine gun. But there's no evidence of what exactly was going on. Were these made by one company and supplied to the other? Were they made by a third party and supplied to both? Why? When? We just have no idea. Um, what we can see here is that the manufacturing quality of the bolt is far higher than the manufacturing quality evident in elements like the grip frame. So the same person did not make both of these parts, but we don't know who did. Uh, the extractor there looks like it was made by the same person that did the grip frame, for what that's worth. Oh, and this would have originally had a fixed firing pin. This particular example has been deactivated by grinding that firing pin off. Someone clearly put quite a lot of work into the front end of the gun. We've got knurled section, a sort of muzzle device, but I don't think that would probably do much as a practical matter. Um, there's some machining done to the front sight there, this relatively nice barrel shroud, like a lot of work went into this end. It is interesting to point out that the barrel is actually smoothbore, it is not rifled. And that's the sort of thing that in 1991, at the height of basically the arms crisis in Croatia, that's acceptable. Like we just need something that'll shoot bullets. Rifling's good, but if we can't have it rifled, well, you know, it's still it's still worth something. There is the rear sight, just a sim simple uh, single notch. It is missing one of the screws that attaches it to the receiver tube. And no other markings on this guy. The fire control system is very simple. Pull trigger, sear drops, it's full auto only, there's no selector switch, there's no safety lever on it. The charging handle here is serialized also 001 matching the gun, and this is clearly taken straight off of a Yugo M56. Uh, those actually had sort of a grip safety flap on them. That part is not on here anymore, but the rest of the, the charging handle is Yugo M56. We do actually know the name of the designer responsible for the Villa Velbita. Uh, he was one Uri Jalalia. Uh, these were manufactured in a shipyard on the coast, at the coastal town of Trogir. Uh, don't know a whole lot more than that though. There was a second version of this that was simplified. It had a simpler stock as well as some simplifications up on this end. Um, I don't have one of those to show you. Um, I don't actually have physical access to one, but there are pictures that exist showing that second version. So. Clearly some further development did happen. Unfortunately we just don't, not, don't know much more about these guns. It's really interesting to see some of the mysteries of, of this particular gun. Where, like, where did the bolt and the recoil spring come from? They're so close to some of the other, like, uh, some of the other domestic Croatian submachine guns. They were clearly manufactured by the same people, but because there are so few records from this period, it really is a mystery of, you know, what was the setup? Was there a third party making some of these parts and supplying them to multiple different shops, to, like to the, the Drogir dockyards? What was the story? There's frankly a, a non-zero chance that someone who is actually associated with this production is watching this video right now. And if that's you, I would love to hear from you. If you want to hit me up in the comments or send me an email, I would love to know more about where some of the elements in this came from. So uh, a friend of mine is in fact working on a book on Croatian firearms and we would love to have uh, better detail on the history of some of the guns like this. So if you have any specific knowledge, please do reach out, let me know. Um, of course, the most of you guys are not Croatian firearms designers from the 90s, so hopefully you enjoyed taking a look at this one. I'd like to give a big thanks to the Croatian Police Museum uh, for giving me access to this very rare serial number one SMG to film and show to you guys. If you find yourself in Zagreb with a few hours to spare, definitely uh, consider stopping by and taking a look at the museum. They have a bunch of cool stuff like this out on display. Anyway, hopefully you enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching.